I just record that it was uh, the sponsorship for today is the Zimmerman family in honor of the engagement of Rabbi Mordechai, and the Shidduch should be the Ito Gizmano Ben Koymai, and also the Chasane, all the Chasanim Simchas Torah as well, who are giving Kiddush this week and are sponsoring this year as well. I'm I'm doing tight selling, by the way. Anytime somebody sponsors a Kiddush, they all there's a sale mod, they get sale mod, and also we're oh, for the extra price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll leave to you <laughs> in the bottom. <laughs> Go ahead. And in two weeks, we have a very special edition of Tzayel. My details to follow. Two weeks. Thanksgiving weekend? No, it's not Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's before Thanksgiving. I'm just going to put this over here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this famous madrash, I think everyone here probably grew up with this madrash. Well-known madrash, that is that there's a man who's traveling, goes from place to place, comes, sees this house all lit up, and he starts wondering to himself, and he says, a house like this, is it possible that this house doesn't have an owner? Who's the owner of the house? And suddenly, the owner comes out and he says, Anibal Habira, I'm the owner of the house. It's my house. So Abram Avinu, he saw a great illuminated world that was all lit up. He looks around, it seems to be an ownerless world. He says, it can't be. Who's the owner? It must be that there's an owner in the world. Who is it? The Kodesh Baruch Hu reveals himself to him and he says, I'm the Bal Habira, I'm the owner. This is the message we all grew up with. We all know it. And from there, the rest is history. Abraham Avinu becomes Abraham Avinu and sets the DNA of Kali Yisrael and Munan HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's the Av HaMaminim. What's all the Chiddush of there? Is he the first one to ever think this? It's a simple medrash. I think it's a question anybody would have asked. They would have looked, they would have said, okay, who built this place? And it seems that this medrash necessitates a lot more depth than just the story itself. And Pasuk Shat, this seems to have caused Avram Avinu to choose a new derech, begs clarity. Was he the first person to ask this question? What about Chanoich? What about Noach, Mesu Shalach, Shein Ve'ever? Avram Avinu, he's called the Avam Aminim, but what about them? Noach was also, Noach is Sadiq. Avram Avinu wasn't called the Sadiq. So what's the difference between Avram and Noach? You know that the famous words from the Chaim on, so everyone says this over, I think every in, in every school they teach this in Parshas Lech Lecha, that the, that the, the Mishnah in Avos tells us that the Asura Nesiyonis for Avram Avinu, why is he called Avram Avinu over there? Sometimes he's called Avram, sometimes Avram Avinu. So he's called Avinu in that sense, because it was through those Nesiyonis that he became our father, became part of the DNA, our genes, that he would pass that on to Kali Yisrael, so when you see a person doing chesed today, hey, he's a nice guy, but you should know hey, he got it from his father. When we when we do things, we act with emuna. We got that from Avram Avinu, and this is part of the DNA of Kali Yisrael. So that comes from Avram Avinu. So why was Avram Avinu who gave us emuna and not Neach? Neach had the same emuna. So the Swaram tells us something interesting about this story, this medrash. I want to put it in a different light. Excuse the pun. I'll explain to you what I mean by that. What was the message? What was the story? He comes to the house. It's all lit up. He says, who's the owner? So let's let's stop. Let's take a step back for a second. You're walking in the desert. I'm going to tell you a story that most everyone heard. You're walking this in the middle of the desert. You see a beautiful Rolex watch. Right? The Rolex Daytona, 19, all the, everything there. And it's clicking exactly to the to, to the second, perfect for the million to the second, whatever they claim. See, where this come from? It just came all by itself. Obviously not. So I'll put it there. Would the marshal be any different if you showed up and the watch wasn't working? The same beautiful watch, but it wasn't working. The guy says, "Hey, it came by itself." Well, if it was working, I wouldn't believe. It. But now that it's not working, I believe it came by itself. Obviously, it's silly. So does the house make a difference if it has lights in it or not? 
It's still architecture, the structure there, the, everything that has the house, everything in the house. And now suddenly, says the Maharaj, the house was lit. He looks, he asks the question, who's the Balabir? What's the difference? Why was the light in the house a fact over here that the Medrash seems to mention? What's the purpose? What does it teach us? You see houses for sale all the time. There's houses for sale, rent, nowadays maybe foreclosure. Some should protect us. Even if there's no electricity going on in the house, you're still going to say the house has an owner. Right? Somebody owns the house. But it seems that Ani Balabir has a different understanding once there's light in the house. So the Swarm explained that the Medrash is not referring to the lights inside of the house, but rather the reflective lights that illuminates the entire area surrounding the house. There's a Medrash that says, by Tsayr Tasala Teva, the Medrash that brings that the lighting there, the lights, the, the windows were done in a way. Just like in just like in the base of Migdash, the windows were done in a way that the lights inside would actually illuminate, project outside. Avraham Avinu sees a beer. The Medrash tells us that this house had light in it that was reflecting all around. He says, okay, I understand if they have lights inside, they need light for themselves, the owner. But what's the purpose of a light that's going to project outside? I understand. He, he needs a light. He wants to read something. But why is he shining the light? What's he trying to do over here? So that's something that Avraham Avinu never saw before. He's trying to understand what's going on. What's the shot in the light that's outside and not for the inside? So he questioned this. He said, what's the benefit? So I'd like to give two approaches. One is one we came up with today, and the other one is from Remir Chadash. The way I understand this I'll say mine first and then the better one afterwards, Achron Achron Chavif. But the way I understand this is like this the Torah, the Emunah Kadesh Baruch Hu, that's the light that guides a person throughout the world. And it's one thing you see, you come, to, you come to a place, you come to a light right in front of you. Okay, I can see right now. What happens if I walk away from the light? Right? Can you hold the flashlight over here? Right. Once you walk away from it, you can't see anything. The Torah gives the ability to take it with you to guide us through every situation in life. And if I don't understand something, a moon is what keeps a person strong, is what teaches a person that even in the darkest moment, the moon shines brightly. And even in the dark moment where it seems that all is lost, a moon teaches a person that it's actually bright. <coughs> Remember by Kaddish Baruch Avraham Avinu sees that there's a light over here that gives off radiance, not just over here, but wherever you go. And he saw that the, the world is a place that's full of an or. The or that's gone us for the tzaddikim, the or that's the or that was from the Sheshim Ebreshis, the or that gives the ability to see in every corner of the world. We, we, from one side of the world, we say, well, I'm not safe, from one side to the other side. So when he sees that, he understands this is different. This is not just an or. This is not just something that's right here. But this is a way that I can live my life. Brahma Venus sees that. He says, okay, that's a derech that I want to go, I want to take. And I want to live with. And I'm going to shout it out to everybody because the whole world has to realize that the Torah leads you. It's it, 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 it's a mayra derech, Torah, ira, ira, it's all the same word. And it, it causes light and, and gives the ability for a person to see in every situation in the world. Every shame situation in life. Shame didn't see it. So, so shame saw it. But shame didn't spread it. Shame didn't spread it. Neich saw it. Neich didn't spread it. We're going, to, we're going to come to that shortly. We're going to, we're going to come back to them momentarily. That's the first mahalach. The second approach, which is he wants to say like this. The purpose of the house was not self-serving. Inside the house, they didn't need anything. They had what they needed. The purpose of the house was for the benefit of everyone else. The owner wasn't selfish. He didn't need the light for himself. He lit the way for others. So that street had no lampposts. Why not? Because the house <coughs> lit up everything around it. This was amazing to Avraham Avinu, especially coming from the dirs that were preceding him. Avraham Avinu looks, he says, I never saw something that you're doing this specifically for everyone else, for Yenim, not for me. That's something that was a chiddush. And he said, that means that the tachlis over here is not for me, but it's for everyone else. 
So what's a what's a from Avinu? From Avinu is the Amud Chesed. Everything about him was Chesed. He learns from this moment. He, he looks at the world. This is a Kadosh Baruch who created a world. Not Hashem. What does Hashem need the world for? Adonai Lo Matzar Malach. Right? What do we say afterwards? Kichloi Sakol. Once everything is done, Levada Yenuchan. Hashem's by himself. Hashem doesn't need any of this. Hashem has everything to lose and nothing to gain by creating this world. Why does he do it? He does it for Yen. He does it for everyone else. He does it for us. So that means that the tachas of the world is Oilam Chesed Yibana. Hashem says, I'm going to create a world for the purpose of everyone else, not for me. So if there's a world of Chesed, and that, that's what it's all about. So Avram Vinu sees this. He says, that's an opportunity. That, that's a way to live a life. That's a way to give over to others, not to live for myself. So the tachas of the world, the tachas of our homes, our possessions, our kachas, our talents, our kishrin, everything that we have in this world is to do for other people. Avram Avinu taught, he taught Kla Yisrael, he taught the world, he taught the world that chesed, even when you're in tsar, you do chesed. Why? Because without chesed, there's no world. So what happens? He has a bris mila, he's in pain. When, when it's the hardest time, can't do chesed. What's the point? He has so much sar. Shem says, okay, I'll give you chesed because the whole world is going to fall apart without it. So he, he teaches us to do chesed in every single case. Everyone really teaches us chesed is without, without an ulterior motive. Where does he learn that from? In the house that Hashem made. Hashem doesn't have any ulterior motive other than providing lights to everyone else. So you know, sometimes a person goes, he wants to go ahead and do a chesed for somebody. Or you speak to someone. If you can do after you can do this chesed. The guy says, what's in it for me? What's in it for you? Do a chesed. But the the the, the it's he guns with our mind in a way that he, he he convinces us that, but maybe I can have an angle in it also. Rabbi it teaches us that you learn from our Kaddish Baruch Hu, There's nothing else other than the Chesed that Hashem is doing for us with no ulterior motive, nothing else. There's no what's in it for me. It's just Yen and no no one else. You think about Noach. So in contrast is to Noach and to Shem Beaver. So Nayak is told, build a teva. Why? Because you're going to go ahead, you're going to convince people to come back to the Kodesh Baruch. You can convince people to do the right thing. He was living in a time when no one did chesed. He was living in a time where they were the lowest of the low, and they stole from each other and all the, all the different affairs that they did. So Nayak, while he's doing all this, he's supposed to convince people to change their ways. And make that light that's going to spread to everyone else. He can't get anybody, and he doesn't get anybody. Rabbi Rucham writes in Das Ter an interesting thing. He says that in the Welt, the way we were created, the way we were created, he says this in by Noach, he says by Noach, he says this in, in Brazil, he says this three times. He says the way we were created, the world and, and all the swarm organizations say the same thing. The Chesedish swarm all say this idea that we are either a mashpia. Or we're a mushpa. It's one of the two. Either you're a mashpia or you're a mushpa. It doesn't. There's no. There's no. There's no two ways. Either you're 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 a giver or you're a taker. Either you're able to be there for other people or you end up having to take. Avram Avinu, he he understands this is a world of giving. He doesn't need a teva to protect him. Why not? Because when you're a mushpa, when you're a mashpia, you're so busy giving off, you don't end up taking in. So what he he's not going to be affected by everyone around him. Why not? <coughs> because he's giving out. He's not pulling in. He's not going to he's not going to take in what they're giving. He's busy giving out. Nayach, the only way to protect him because he wasn't being much on others was to put him in a box. Just to put him in a box, put him in a table, literally. That's shame behavior. Why weren't they the Gedeim? So people went to them for advice, but they sat in their own place. They didn't go out. Ramavino was outreach. He went. He was chesed. He was giving. To other people, he was giving the terror to other people. He was giving the he was giving the chesed to other people. So that's a little bit of the differences between them. There's a pasuk in in Shirashim, We say by Achis uh, Ketana. I don't remember the pasuk by, uh, by heart. Achis Ketana. What's the what's Achis Ketana? What's the last one? Pasuk in Shirashim. Here we go. Achis Ketana Shadayim Ema. Oh, the rest of the pasuk. Right. So Shadayim Eila. So says Rashi. What's Achis Ketanim Shadayim Eila? How do I know that? So Rashi says something interesting. Rashi says because the Tachlis 
is to be able to give other people. The tachlis of a woman, she has to be able to nurture her children, she has to be able to feed them, to be able to give to the next generation. If she's not doing that, it must be she's achiz kedem, it must be she's still small. It must be she's not yet mature enough to be able to give. Der kedem, der kedem. This is, in, in, in all the sifra this is, it's, this is, this is a basic 101 in, in, the, in the old days in, in, in this form, is that we have the ability to be mature, to give off, to be gedem, to give off to others, or we can remain a katanam. As immature is not giving. The katan, Rashi says, is the one that cannot go ahead and feed to the next. So says Avram Avinu, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to understand, we have to spread this to the entire world. Chesed, Oilam, Chesed, Yaban. And that's what he saw from the beer, and that's... I think it's an incredible lesson over here. And finally, what's the greatest level of tzedakah? Right? There's something called matan b'seser. A great level in tzedakah is matan b'seser. What's part of matan b'seser? So, so, so you're not embarrassing the person. You're right. But also, matan b'seser, there's no opportunity to put up. The second the sign goes up, you know, donated by this and this person, it's no longer matan b'seser. Matan b'seser means that I'm giving. There's no ulterior motive. There's nothing there at all. No one knows about it. I'm giving. I have nothing from it. So it's it's true that in our lives, we cannot go ahead. We have to earn a living. We have to do things. And that's just the currency of the world. But at least we can try and figure out, is there, can I do one mitzvah that's altruistic, that there's nothing involved that I can do for someone else? One thing, 100% with James I think this is a, an idea we can take. Yeah, yeah. Well, we obviously can do it, but I'm not being taught us to do it. After all said and done, Yaakov Levine spent quite a bit of time by uh, Shane Baber, so things must have changed along the way. No, he, no, he went to them. 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 He didn't. Uh... I'm trying to, to I guess, you. I mean, it's, and there's no question okay. that it's good for you. Like you to 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 what are you told? They get employees of their sponsor companies to go help build that house for for homeless people, underprivileged people. So one of the regional coordinators in our office. And I had an opportunity to talk to them, so I and and they do it during the day, during the day, like take a work day. Use they a point for uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh -huh. uh, so about twenty people sign up, and you know, Brookfield is a sponsor of this one of these events. So I asked them, I said, "Do you ever think about doing it on the weekend?" You know, the crews that are doing these, they're building houses for real, and they have to spend time with these low yeast blocks, don't know how to hold a hammer, right? For a whole day, yes, it makes everybody feel good, but do it on a weekend. When he says they used to years ago. Nobody wanted to come. They come now because they're missing a day of work. Mm -hmm. right, so the chesed, 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 I'm doing chesed. What's in it for me? Right. The only reason why they're doing the chesed, chesed is because chesed. they're getting something. Instead of uh, going to work, I get to sense. build this house. But it makes I, come, I come from the business. Yeah, because, yeah. I think, I, I think that uh, it's uh, altruistically uh, is also I think it's, uh, uh, that I'm doing chesed altruistically. Yeah. Nothing in it for me. That's also a no. I don't know you let it have. <laughs> What's it? I told you tell me about it. I did this. I Nobody knows. Nobody I think I think that the, by Noyach the the Dora Mavo were attacking him. You hear that, Yanko? Yeah, yes. they were attacking him. So, so, so it was a lost cause. The the tzaddik was a tzaddik. He did everything that Hashem commanded him to the last drop. He didn't miss a beat. And uh, and uh, they were attacking him. Even there was no there was no hope. To, he couldn't convert them. It was impossible to convert them. How do you know? Maybe he didn't. Try. How do you know? He didn't try. He was chastised for not. I'm trying. telling you, they were attacking him. They were attacking him while he was building the the tape. One of them. It doesn't mean they were attacking. Him. They were attacking him because he didn't give them any of the Torah. You don't want to. Okay. Oh, What's that? Am I on him? Yeah, you're on. 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 Yeah, you're on.
No, no, but he kept pestering Hashem. Even after Hashem said, I wouldn't, he kept asking him again and again. Because he wanted to save light. He wanted to save light. He wanted to save light. He didn't want to save light. Yes, he wanted to save light. That's where it went. Excuse me. He kept pestering Hashem. No, he didn't ask once, don't bring the marble. <laughs> this is my ever shot. <laughs> yeah, but it's 21 degrees outside. You're not dominating. So your case didn't work so well. <laughs> it's in a cup. So I, Avram is the first one to really realize that the purpose of the world is to give unconditional. And that's what the Torah is. To recognize that concept that Hashem gives us unconditionally, I have to spread the message to give unconditionally. And he emulated that, right? Yeah, yeah. To give unconditionally. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Very good. No, go ahead. Oh, you got the old dick one. Okay. You ever thought about this? The light? Great. That's great. Yeah. Every, when you look at a muscle, the medrash, you really have to take it apart, yeah. right? Yeah. Sorry, the, the light was, I didn't realize the light was outside the house. No, the light was inside. The says there was, there was light. Spread out. Yeah, it's, it's spread out. No, but it looked like there's an owner, active owner. That's why I said, that. when you see the Ro Rolex that's not working, the, the guy put out. He's not interested anymore. He's but me, he, but even that had to come from somewhere. Yeah, I know, but it wasn't that right. it came from somewhere. You're right. Wait, but what Abram was asking is, there's an act. Very nice. This looks yeah. like there's a high connected. You connect it to housing. And that's what I understood from the motion. Right? That there's a yeah, there's a, somebody here. The Baal boss is here. Same Yankee. The Baal boss, I think that the the that the um Avoid the Zora Avoid that they had, they didn't worship pagans. I think they believed there were bunch from built the world and he left. And he left it uh, in Avram's time? No, in Avram's time. What did they believe? Yeah, okay, Avram's time didn't believe in Hashem. They didn't know. They didn't know the existence. Yeah. They didn't know anything that there was a boy Rally one. No, that's what Avram said. It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't mean that boy Rally one is here and active. There's a shkach of pratis. That's what I think. He cares about this world. I mean, so, some, something like that. Um, if you look in, what's Orgadalio? Yeah. So he so he's busy taking it apart. What the uh, the song? No, taking it apart about the difference of Ashkaka Patsis versus Kalas. Uh-huh. With Avram Avinu. That's how he understands the whole. Avram Avinu knew Avram Avinu knew what was going on in Sdom before before Hashem told him. How do you know? No, the Pasik says Hamachasani me Avram. Yeah, but I'm actually, says, uh, I have to but he knew he knew what a terrible people they were before Hashem told him they're going to be destroyed. He wouldn't take anything from them in the in the Muhammad. He knew what was going on there. He knew it was a terrible place. Maybe sorry. <laughs> Are you watching it? Mm -hmm. You're watching it. No, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. I hear it. I, I don't know if he knew exactly what was going on in Stein. Yes, he did. I think, though, there is a medrash, by the way, Yaakov, that he, Ishmael married, and Avram came to visit him. You know this medrash? And Avram came to visit him, and the lady wasn't nice to him when she came in, who's this old man? She wasn't Mach Nisaira. So Avram left him a message and said, your house needs renovation. So Ishmael understood from that that this woman wasn't kind of, he divorced her. And he married somebody else, and then Avram came to visit again, and again Yishmol wasn't there. And he, <coughs> this time he came and says, the house looks very good. Well, just to know that Avram, even as far as Yishmol went, Yishmol was kicked out of the house, but Avram kept in touch with him. That's a medrash. And therefore what? So that point is that even though Yishmol, who wasn't, really part of Avram's legacy, Avram cared enough to see that he has, um, a, that he has chesed going on. Yeah, what's so that going to do, what's that going to do? I think it's time. time, Avram didn't know what was going on in Stein. That's He all. did know. Only after Hashem told him. 
No, he wouldn't take anything from them in when they had the when the, the, the Malachim were fighting and they and he wanted to the, the, he said I'm not taking any not in the, the now I'm not taking I'm not taking a shoelace. I don't know if that's the same thing. I, I'll let you mark if I answer that. I think that's something different. It's not different at all. He knew low, low, where light went. The, you think he didn't know what was going on there? Akiva, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. I don't know what to say. I made a mistake. You uh, link didn't work. Yeah. Nobody, nobody stuck with him. The only one now, it's not now, he has no friend. He has... Yeah, sorry, okay, go ahead. I'm going to change, I'm going to change. Oh, Kiva. Yeah. Friends, no. Yeah, are we on for tomorrow? Do you need me to be... Can you hear me, Akiva? Hello? No. Yeah, did you? Um, <laughs> this is my passport. This is what happened with my passport. Yeah. Uh, you need me to pick you up? No, no. Can you hear me? Can. Did you hear me? Yeah. The lights were out, but someone was home. 